we, we've been talking about Christmas for the last few weeks because, you know, it just, you, you just have to make a lot about Christmas because it means a whole lot. And you have to make a whole lot about Easter. In fact, you, you, you have to make a whole lot about Jesus. Now, I'm going to give you a little secret. Uh, somebody said to me not long ago, uh, something that nobody had ever said anything, said, you know, you're, you're, you're so didactic. That means you just say the same thing over and over and over. They said, they said when I come here on Sunday to hear you preach, uh, I know no matter what Sunday it is, I know what you're going to preach. All you preach about is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Well, if I'm a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, what else am I going to preach about? I mean, stop and think about it. Your world, this is what Isaiah chapter 6 is going to talk about. Your world has to be consumed with the presence and the power of God. For you to experience the, the, the baby in the manger, Emmanuel, God with us, your world has to be filled with the presence of God. That, that's what we call discipleship. That's what we call a quiet time. That's what we call uh, having, having a word from and a word to God. That, that's what we call getting your Bible and maybe a devotional guide. But you, you not only read it, but you meditate on it. You think about it. You open yourself to the voice of God. Uh, here in Charlotte, uh, we, we recently had a news crew uh, that crashed in a helicopter. And one of the men, his name was Jason Meyer. Jason was a born-again Christian. Jason was a son of a Methodist pastor. Jason loved the Lord. Jason witnessed for the Lord. Uh, Jason uh, told people about Jesus. And they asked him, well, what was the last thing before he got in that helicopter? What did he do? Well, that day he had gone to a, a, a Christian school and he had talked to them about his quiet time. And I'm sure one of the things he talked to them about in his quiet time, because you can't have a quiet time without saying something about Jesus. So that's what Isaiah is doing here. That's, that's what we're doing here today. We're talking about Jesus. If you want, to, want Jesus to be real to you, then you've got to seek him with all your heart. He's already there. But you've got to get everything else out of the way. You can't, you, you, you can't sing... Uh, 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 songs of this world. You can't uh, go to the places of this world and, and, and experience Jesus. It's not because he's not there. It's just that your heart is torn apart. So what is happening to Isaiah here in Isaiah chapter 6? He's getting ready to tell us about the virgin birth. God is getting ready to reveal to him who God is and what he's doing. So he's getting to tell us that I saw the glory of God. I saw the glory of God there in the temple. And he talks all about that. But then he tells us that the shepherds who were, were minding their sheep and were minding their own business on a dark, cold night, there in that arid region up above Bethlehem, they saw a great light. They heard the songs of angels. They heard the message that for unto you is born this day in the city of, of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and you'll know who he is because he's a baby and he's in a barn with his mama and his daddy. Well, how many, how many barns in Bethlehem had a newborn baby in them? That narrowed it down quite a bit. So they, they went and they worshiped. They saw the glory of God in a little baby born of a virgin. You say, oh, I, you know, God, God couldn't do this. God, God says, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come to you as a baby through a virgin. You say, well, that's impossible. Exactly. People of faith, nothing is impossible. So a virgin woman can have a baby. And she did. And by the way, not only those people, but there were the astrologers, the wise men from the east, what we know today as Iran, Iraq, and that area. Can you imagine that? They laid down everything they were doing, and they came over, over the desert. It was a long trip. They had a lot, lot of trouble to worship just for a moment or two this Savior 
who is Christ the Lord. And they went back and they told everybody about Jesus. Now, I, I can't improve on that. When I say Mer Merry Christmas, I can't improve on that. So in the darkest of nights, the light of God will shine. In the most loneliest time, the host of heaven will appear. In the times of great despair, the song of, 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 of the ages will be sung. A virgin will conceive a baby and will have that baby. And that baby will be born in Bethlehem and he will be Emmanuel, God with us, and we're going to call him Jesus because he is going to save his people from their sins. So, so what God is saying to Isaiah, a greater than Solomon is coming, a greater than David is coming, a greater than Moses is coming, the greatest people you've ever, ever known, he is coming and he's going to be Jesus, savior of the world. I'm a little bit amused by the media right now. They're, they're saying, oh, the greatest president in the world, the greatest president in the history of the United States is so-and-so and so-and-so. Well, that I, I listen, by the way, I nominate Jesus Christ to be the president of the United States because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. All that other stuff, it's not important. The only thing that's important is do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? So your everything is in Jesus. Uh, remember, after Jesus was born, when his, his uh, parents took him to the temple, there was a woman by the name of Anna. She was a widow. Her husband had died. And for, for years, years, I mean many, many years, when she was like a teenager, she had gone to the temple and she just sat there and waited because she said, God has promised me I am going to see the coming Savior. And when Jesus walked in there or when Jesus was carried in there by his mama and daddy, she says, I have seen the Lord. God has kept his word. Simeon, another man who was just there praying, praying to God, he saw Jesus. And he just praised the Lord. John the Baptist's daddy, Zacharias, he, he saw what God was getting ready to do, that his son was going to be a predecessor of Jesus. And it was so overwhelming to him that he'd lost his voice. He couldn't even speak. But what God has done to you, he's overwhelmed you with the presence of Jesus. And he's now given you a voice for you to tell others about heaven. So you will never know the Lord. You'll never know heaven until your life comes to a point where you get everything else out and you just let Jesus come in. That's why when Isaiah saw God lifted up, he said, woe is me for I am lost and I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts. Uh, that's, that's just, that's just, hey, that's just an early revelation. That's 800 BC. God is still revealing himself. And do you remember when you came to Jesus, you did not feel worthy. You know why you didn't feel worthy? Because you're not worthy. He alone is worthy of our, our praise. So in humility right now, even if you're, uh, especially if you're saved, even in your, your humility, you bow before God, the God of heaven. And if you will bow before God, then he will exalt you higher than the heavens. Uh, not so people will watch you, but so that people will experience the glory of Adonai. As Moses saw God's, the glory of God on the mountain, uh, there where he, he, he received the Ten Commandments, his face shone. It will make a difference in your countenance. It will make a difference in your voice. It will make a difference in everything. As Peter saw the glory of God there on the Mount of Transfiguration, as John said, I have beheld the glory of God. You can do that 
right now, just bow and open your heart to Jesus Christ and you will receive the glory of God in your heart. But don't be surprised that you're, you're not over, that you, if you're overwhelmed because you will be overwhelmed and you'll be like Isaiah. You'll say, oh Lord, I'm undone. I'm unworthy. I am nothing. I have no power whatsoever. And when you get to that point, then God will fill you with his power and his might and his strength, and you will praise God forever and forever. Amen. Thank you so much, and I hope you've had the best Christmas you've ever had.